The Hero's Journey, first proposed by author Joseph Campbell in his book The Hero with a Thousand Faces. This is the story structure that supposedly every story can fall into. This is bullshit. Some stories just aren't meant to be about the hero. Some stories star someone that isn't particularly heroic and is just an average job. Some stories don't like having a formulaic structure. And some stories are about the villain. That is what we are here to discuss today. The villain's journey. One healthy place. This is the point in the story where the villain is you know, they're, they're doing pretty alright. They, they're probably quite heroic, actually. Just nothing really getting in their way. They are just... I forgot my script. I got my script. One, healthy place. At this point in the story, the villain, quote-unquote, is actually pretty heroic. This is like Shay Patrick Cormack as an assassin. This is... Anakin Skywalker, just working with Obi-Wan Kenobi, not really being evil. And here, the villain is actually good. They're probably a good guy. But that will soon change as they are broken by this awful, awful world. Beginning with two, Sight of Evil. At this point in the story, the villain sees that there's a problem with their corrupt world. This is when Shay causes the Lisbon earthquake, trying to activate a precursor artifact. But the thing is, the villain ain't just gonna sit idly by and let it happen. Hell no. Remember, villain equals hero at this point. So, right now, the villain is still gonna step in and try and help. Technically, they have to make a choice here, but we all know what the answer is. They are going to choose three. Wish to fix. At this point in the story, the villain, after seeing the problems with their corrupt world, chooses to try something else. They choose to try and be a hero. At this point, they break away from their moral code they were stuck in. At this point, they break away from the humble farm life they may have wanted. At this point, they break away from the school that ha had them stuck doing the same damn thing every single fucking day. This is the point where they set out on their hero's journey. But of course, that's not what this is about, is it? Four, the journey begins. I can't write in cursive. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. This is when the villain sets out on their quest for heroism. This is where they set out to fix their broken system. This is where they set out to change their corrupt world. This is where Shay defects from the assassins, hoping to end the suffering of others. At this point in the story, the villain has spent all of their time in the known world. But now, it's time for them to break into the unknown! I'm not sorry. Five, secretly evil mental. At this point in the story, the villain teams up with someone that they believe to be good. They are wrong. The mentor that they choose is Emperor Palpatine, Darth Sidious. Someone that we may or may not know is actually evil, but they sure as hell do not. One of the examples I have written down here is Haytham Kenway in Assassin's Creed Rogue, and he is actually a very interesting example, because Shay seeks him out after defecting to the Templar. So, 
he's really not a secretly evil mentor, and Che is trying to be evil. Why did I use Che as an example so much of this? I'm fully forgetting my reasoning at this point, and Che's not a very good example of my story after the first few because of how he intentionally defects the Templars rather than secretly, rather than slowly being corrupted by it. Six, the tale of twists and turns. This is the longest part of the screenplay. This is the moment of insanity. This is the fun and games. This is the road of trials. This is the moment that, where it's all coming together, but not yet. This is the moment, my friends, where you know the boy. This is the tale of gradually getting worse and worse, of imperial marches, of friendly monsters killed. But in the end, it all leads to seven. Revelation. At this point in the story, the villain realizes. Are we the baddies? This is actually the moment in the story most subject to not happen, because maybe you realize throughout the whole thing that what you're doing is wrong and you're being manipulated by an evil flower, but you just don't care because you are an evil, evil human being who just wants to do everything because you can. But maybe, maybe you will realize that you're evil and you will potentially elect to change your ways, but that, we will get to that later. For now, this is the moment where you just realize them, that what you're doing is bad after you killed your dear friend Papyrus, but also maybe you, nothing will happen until you cut down the last tree in the forest and you're unable to continue making your needs, which is a very strange thing. The, the Lorax movie was very weird. I'm getting completely off topic, but I don't care. I'm leaving all of this in. Editor, you cannot stop me. I edit my own videos. I wouldn't stop me anyway. <laughs> this is the moment where everything might change. As this leads to one of the only inevitable parts of the villain's journey. Eight. The villain variable, or the ultimate choice. I will admit that the ultimate choice is a much cooler name, but I am not going to use it because this name has alliteration and is also much goofier. This is the moment where, following the realization that they are evil, the villain elects to choose. Do they keep going? Or do they call it quits on their villainy? If they keep going, then we get the rest of this. But if they choose to call it quits, well, then they stop being a villain. If the villain is the antagonist, they'll keep going. If the villain is the protagonist, it's like a 50-50. They may, quite possibly, at this point in the story, just stop. They'll just stop right here and rewind all of this, turn back the clocks, turn back the clocks, turn back the clocks. As they turn back the clocks, they'll become more and more of a hero. That is what usually happens if this is the story of a redeemed villain. This is what Zuko did. This is what most redemption arcs do. The villain doesn't usually get past this point if they're going to be redeemed. But if they're not going to be redeemed, they choose to keep going. And so, we exit the center of the earth. And we arrive in the voyage home. Beginning with... Nine. The descent into madness. You know it's a BDG parody when I'm dropping layers. Following their final descent into madness, the villain goes on a rampage. They wreak havoc throughout all their universe or whatever their space is. This is the round two of their road of twists and turns. This is where the villain goes 
on their chaotic, evil rampage. But when there's evil, there must always also be good. And in this good, there will arise Ten! A hero! Now this moment isn't necessarily when the hero first appears. This is the moment where the villain first starts to take note of the hero. This will be the moment where Vader sees that Luke has arrived. Once the hero has gotten the villain's notice, we reach the point in the journey where I run out of space. Okay, I think we can get rid of this part. The rest. So, as I was saying, when the hero has emerged and gotten the villain's notice, we get to... Eleven! Vast conflict. In this vast conflict, we see the hero's journey. This is where the bulk of the hero's journey will play out. So if the star so if the star of this tale is the hero, this is this this is most of the story. But if the star of this but if the star of this tale is the villain, well this is only going to be a few minutes. What matters here is what it leads to. 12 final battle this penultimate step is exactly what it sounds like. The final confrontation between the hero and the villain. Frequently, this moment will contain some dramatic piece of information revealed to the audience. This will be where Luke finds out that Vader is his father. This will be where I have no other examples. This will be, why did I continue talking? <laughs> this is my descent into madness. This is the big, dramatic, final confrontation that the entire story has been building towards. And at the end of all of this, when it is complete, we get to Villain Variable Redux. At this point in the story, it all goes to shit for one party or the other. Either the villain wins or they lose. If the villain wins, this is a dark tale. One of either a person corrupted by their broken world or the tale of a hero who just couldn't win. But in most stories, they have a happy ending, or at least a positive one, because the villain will lose, the hero will defeat them, and this will not be the story of a person broken by their world, this will be the story of a triumphant hero emerging! But after all of this, I realized that I, I couldn't just make all of this happen on its own. There needed, there, there has to be something else. There, there can't be this big empty space in the middle. There has to be some final light. And that's when I realized it. What do all villain stories have in common? The protagonist thanks their audience for watching, and asks them to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and stay tuned for more. That's right, motherfuckers, I did it! I meant to throw that at the camera. That's right, motherfuckers, I did it! I missed again. That's probably good. I don't want to knock over my phone. See you in another one.